Good morning. Mahalo for coming to us uh, this morning. Before we move forward with uh, today's announcement, I'd like to begin by thanking especially Benji Taylor and this year's basketball team. We had a difficult beginning and people pulled together and uh, did what I, th I think it was Dave Reardon said this morning was improbable. Uh, we pulled off a really great season. So let me begin by thanking the team uh, and especially Benji for all their hard work and success uh, this year. Speaking of hard work and dedication, I'd also like to thank the members of the advisory committee that advised me in making the selection of the basketball coach. First, Laura Beeman, uh, head women's basketball coach. Ron Cambra, assistant vice, uh, assistant vice chancellor for undergraduate education. Amanda Patterson, our director of compliance and eligibility for the athletic department. And Stacy Price, director of student affairs. Uh, the committee worked hard and long, sometimes interviewing people at 4.30 a.m. Hawaii time uh, to make things work. They completed a thorough review of more than 80 candidates in a timely manner and working in concert with our incoming athletics director made a recommendation which I have enthusiastically, enthusiastically accepted. We were blessed with excellent candidates, but one person clearly rose to the top. He possesses all the qualities we're looking for in our next head basketball coach. Outstanding basketball knowledge, proven coaching skills and recruiting success, a strong commitment to student athletic welfare, student athlete welfare, and an unwavering dedication to academics and to NCAA compliance. Also as a bonus, he has been a member of our Ohana previously and has a deep love and appreciation for our men's basketball program, the university and its proud traditions of the culture here and the culture of Hawaii. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you our new head men's basketball coach, Aran Ganat. This is overwhelming, and uh, you know, I was talking to some guys coming in here. I'm going to be myself. You know, there, there's certain I got advice. I, you know, I talked to Coach Bennett, who's been helping me on along the way, and he he's, offers great advice in a lot of areas, except for this one. When I talked to him, he said, "Don't ask me." When when I did my uh, press conference, I bought a suit and I had the tag on there the whole time. <laughs> so I'm going to stay away from Bennett on that one. Other than that, he's been great for me. I want to thank the Chancellor for the introduction, and I'll continue to thank you guys here in a bit. This is uh, overwhelming. I debated whether I should, and I'm going to go back and forth. I'm going to talk to you guys. I'm going to read off the speech. At the end of the day, I might show some nerves, and I might cry, and I don't care because that's who I am. It's not often you fulfill your dream, and today I get to fulfill my dream. I'm humbled and honored to stand before you as the head coach at the University of Hawaii for men's basketball. It all starts with appreciation and giving thanks, and I stand here before you because of many wonderful people who have impacted my life, a lot of which are here today. I see a lot of familiar faces, and I will do my best to do justice because there's just too many people to thank. And so everyone in here, thank you. First, I'd like to thank the chancellor again the president, Dave Matlin, the committee, as well as Carl Clapp and Paul and Ishimoto for their efforts in this process. I know how difficult it can be to get to this point, how much time we have to sacrifice, and how many people you have to visit with. I want to thank them for getting to this point and obviously thank you for recommending me. I'm big on family and people, and I have been more than spoiled in this area. I want to thank my folks, my brother, my two sisters, some of which are back home in New Jersey, who are probably watching today. It tells you something how special Hawaii is when you can feel at home and be 5,000 miles away from where you grew up. 
When I first came here, and I'll talk about this later, I did not know one person. Riley Walls picked me up from the airport. He was the first person I got to know. I want to thank my Hawaiian mom and dad, Dr. Ono and Al Ono, who are here today, for taking me in and treating me, like so many here today, as one of their own. I knew, like I said, I knew nobody when I first came to Hawaii. And I see faces, I'm gonna thank Ron Yee's here, talk. Carolyn is here, thank you Carolyn for making it. And I'll thank more, as I see Jackson Wheeler in the background who's had a huge impact on me, Bobby Kerr and Robert Kikawa. This could go forever. And I might want that, because they told me there's a Q&A at the end, and if I keep going, it's called controlling the press conference. <laughs> I want to share something that I did share with the committee. I've been with my significant other, Barbie, for four years, past four years. She may, she may be the only person who might love Hawaii more than me, which is hard to fathom. The plan for me, I'm being very candid here, was to pop the question after our season. Obviously, we've had a lot going on since our season ended. I told the committee, you know, I'm about to pop the question. She loves Hawaii. You guys could really help me out here. <laughs> so I want to thank the committee again for improving my chances. <laughs> Briefly to our little one, Ziza, who I know is watching. I love you guys. You're my life, and you've changed my life, and I'm very blessed. I, I want to get a coaching because I knew you, you could have an impact, and I've had great coaches, and I want to thank a lot of them today. Growing up, uh, John Cornet and Kurt Homan took me in when I was youth ball and high school and so forth. They laid the foundation for what I hoped was, would be considered a great work ethic. It led me to you know, Coach Wimberly at Swarthmore, who it could get, I mean, it could get emotional talking about these guys. They, he, he's been huge for me. He's someone I've talked to, and it was a great moment for me to call him and tell him I'm going to be the head coach at Hawaii. I can always talk to Coach Wimberly. It was through Coach Wimberly that I got connected with Coach Bennett, who gave me my coaching start. I spent eight years with Coach and can't imagine a better coach, mentor, and friend. He hired me as a volunteer 12 years ago, which I'm very proud of because I do believe in working your way up and it allows you to understand every aspect of running a program. He has groomed me for this day and I'm appreciative. I've always, you know, people talk all the time about one day running your own program and as you go through and your philosophy changes, it's, it became I wanted to run a great program and I wanted to run a great program at the University of Hawaii and I'm thankful for Coach for putting me in this position today. All the good folks at St. Mary's, you know, I, it's been a whirlwind because I, I was telling these guys before we came out here, you know, when something like this happens, even during the process, I, I can't separate. I have to go try to get this and do the best job I can at St. Mary's. When I leave a place, as people know, when I was here in the past during the transition, a transition, it's important to me to see as many people as I can. And we spent eight years at a place it's hard to do that in a short time frame when you're supposed to hop on a 7 p.m. flight, meet with the guys in the morning. and So I want to thank the people at St. Mary's, including the guys I coached, the guys I got to work with, the people in the administration. And yesterday I got an opportunity to speak to our guys, and I told them they, they put me in this position today. It was very emotional. I love our guys, and I love our guys here as I get to know them. Riley Wallace. I think you never know sometimes. My first encounter with Riley was in 2005 when we played here and I was at St. Mary's. I actually just knew him as the big dude who complains about every call. <laughs> I did not know, when I said you never I did not know he'd have the impact he has had on my life. He called me the next year and offered me a job. I studied coaches in their paths. I had a lot of respect for him from afar. I knew that it could be his last year, which it was. And I thought, wow, I could work for Riley Walls. And if it was the next year, I wouldn't have had the opportunity to be around him. And if it was the next, you know, I just I get emotional talking about him. He's, he's the best. And I'm thinking about him today and Joan. As people know, he's, he's had some health issues. 
I was able to see him after his second his second stroke, and I'm just so happy to say that he's uh, he he's got so much fight. I mean, he's he's getting better every day. I talk to him. I know he's. I think David said this. A proud papa today, and thank you to Coach Wallace, Coach Nash. As good a man, as high in integrity as a as you could ever have. And I'm a product of, like I said, great people. I have, I have great experience on the basketball side, the X's and O's, but a recurring theme you'll hear with me is it all starts and ends with people. It all starts always with leadership and great leadership. And I'm excited about this opportunity for all those reasons. A lot of things have to align. There is great leadership right now at the University of Hawaii. And somehow, if I need to be inspired any more than I that was a big part of it. And when Dave spoke at his press conference, which I watched about winning with integrity, as much as this is my dream job, if that was not the mission, I told the committee that, then this would no longer be my dream job. It's just that simple. I, pers I just think they're all, I'm big on achievers, on the court, off the court, in the classroom, as I sh shift gears here and talk, and I apologize to anyone I did not thank, because I, I mean, I, it might be just at a loss. I'm very appreciative of everybody. But talking about this opportunity in front of me right now, there's a couple things about Hawaii. People ask me why this is my dream. And I don't take this lightly. I know a lot of coaches in this profession, they, they can scramble, they can look at other options. I, I'm very invested where I'm at. And I believe in working hard, treating people right and doing right. And hopefully things will take care of itself. It's served me well. It's got me to this point. Yeah, I mean, when people ask me a dream job, I've heard some press conferences where a person will say, this is one of my dream jobs. Said, one of my dream jobs. Isn't it one? It's just one. You know, I've always wanted to run a program where I've coached or played. And... As that became clear, I wanted to be the head coach at Hawaii. I wanted this job, and I'm happy to be here in front of you today. When people ask me why is this so important to you, because number one, it's home and it's family, and I talked about that briefly. I come back here. I visit with people, my friends and family here. I feel very comfortable here. The people here have changed my life. Like I said, they took me, people here took me in and treated me like their own. And so to get the opportunity, I've always wanted to coach, and I, and, I, and I want to live in Hawaii and be around you guys. And so to get that opportunity today, I'm very excited and very appreciative. So for me, the dream job, number one, it comes back to home and family. Number two, I think it's important, like I said, investment in history. I know the history of this program really well, and I've gone to meet past coaches. And I'm sorry I'm going long, but this is part of what I talked about, about eliminating the Q&A. Um, I've been fortunate to meet, you know, I meet the, met the 5-5, five five, got to work with Riley, Bob Nash. I see Artie here, and I'm very happy you're here. Jackson, I'll say again, thank you for being here, Bobby Curran, <laughs> Gary. It's, um, I know the history well, and I study it, and I think it's important to appreciate the history of this program. It's a rich tradition, and, you know, I got to meet Red Rocha. I want to say something about Larry Little because he's so good to me, and, and Pat, and crossing paths, come came to our games in Las Vegas. I know he's smiling down on this to, right now, he's smiling down on us all. I want to talk about the program, and I'll answer some questions, but I want to be very respectful and should be of, just like Chancellor, the Chancellor hit on the front end, these guys did a great job in a very tough situation, staff and players. And as I approach things moving forward, I want to make sure I understand. we all understand. I get that. When I keep coming back, there's going to be X's and O's, offense philosophy, recruit philosophy, all that. The most important thing is people. And there's a whirlwind going on and things I need to address, and I get that. But I'm, I'm going to slow things down and understand right now that the most important thing is people, and I'm going to address the people aspect first. When the, these guys in the committee asked me if I had any questions, my first question was, how are the guys? And when can I get in front of the guys? 
and I was able to, like I wanted to get in front of them before I did anything else, and I was able to this morning. And they're a resilient group. I'll share what we talked about. I was real. I talked to them like I talked to you, like I talked to anyway. There ain't no surprises. I congratulate them on a great season. And I told them how special it is to be at Hawaii. The other reason, and I'm going on tangents here, but why this is a dream job is it's a, it's a place where you can make an impact. And there are challenging times ahead. There's some uncertainty. And that's drew me to the, actually, some people could get scared away from that. That drew me to the job a little bit more. There's a calling here, in my opinion, and I, it felt right. And whatever challenges lay ahead, whatever uncertainty there is, I just know that we'll tackle them head on with no excuses and the approach that we talk about all the time. This is going to be about a culture, of, a great culture of work, of discipline, of team, and of people who understand or want to learn and buy in and be here. And I'll approach that with our guys, recruiting, our staff. And right now what matters to me is getting in front of them, talking to the staff, talking to the coaches here in the administration, everybody here who supports this program and this school. And I'm very much looking forward to the challenge moving forward. Again, I'm humbled. Thank you. Thank you. Is that me to say then? Derek's not helping me here. Uh, I'll, I'm open for uh, questions. Hey, Coach Gannat. Uh, hey, congratulations and welcome. Um, Thank you. Just the, even the last day or two um, after maybe you got final word, um, w what was the most challenging thing you think you encountered? Keeping it quiet. It's nice. It's it's interesting because uh, I guess you shift gears, you know, when you find you get the confirmation, and then you want to you want to enjoy the moment. And to be honest, it it might come up a question as it hits you yet, but. It really, it, it, it's hard to, because I haven't had an opportunity to celebrate, and I do want to celebrate this, but things have been going, and I, like I told you earlier, you know, when you're trying to address things with St. Mary's and, and make sure things are right on both ends and doing that, and then you're hopping on a flight, it's, it's hard to. But uh, I guess what's good on a flight is you can kind of organize some thoughts, and what hit me first is, again, just first a million things, and then initially tell myself, slow down. Slow down. Things will be fine. Um, have you... Uh, hey, Dave. Hi. Good to see you again. Um, you, you, um, I think you're an up-and-coming commodity. Did you, do you have other inquiries, or had you expressed any interest elsewhere? I go back to... It's funny. I go back to what I said earlier. St. Mary's in Hawaii. Swarthmore. Those are the places I've played or coached and I don't pursue. I, I, have a, I had a very good situation at St. Mary's. I had a good relationship with our head coach, our, our president, our athletic director, the people there. It's a great place for family and uh, you know, I've been spoiled by two phenomenal places. So I just, I just didn't, I just was so invested with let's make St. Mary's as good as we can be and the rest will take care of itself. And I know that sounds somewhat Really? He, you, yeah, that's, that's kind of how I did it. And uh, I feel really good about it. I feel very, I don't like talking about myself, as some people here know. So this is, I know I have to a little bit here. But I'm in a good place, and I feel good about who I am and the values I've had. And I've been fortunate, again, to be around good people who taught me that. And that's just the way I approached the career. Hey, Coach, congratulations. Thank you. Um, have you reached out to Benji Taylor or vice versa to maybe talk about things since you were hired? There, there hasn't been much contact. Honestly, there hasn't been much contact with anybody. As this thing went rapid fire, I look forward to visiting with him. Um, I want to say again how great a job these guys did, and obviously he was at the helm. And uh, I'm very respectful that Benji 
you know, during the transition, we encountered each other. Maybe, you know, when Gib came on for, for a week, we may have worked together, but we're, it was a recruiting period, so we didn't really have much time. But I had known Benji before that. You know, obviously, he came up a couple times to play a game. So I'm looking forward to meeting with him and the staff. And like I said, with so many things going on, I'm going to make sure I, I address people first. Um, hey, Coach, just want to say congrats again. Thank um, you. You said you talked to the players this morning. What were some of the reactions or responses that you got from some of the players? You know, without going into too much detail on it, I wish I had more time with them. I mean, the focus of that was because I wanted them to hear from me before they, this happened or it hurt anything else. And uh, it's a tough situation. And I actually shared with them, I, I've somewhat been there. I've been in the transition here, actually. And I told them how I approached it. And I'm so invested where I'm at that I wanted to make sure, you know, it was an uncertain time for me. I, I thought it was important to be open with them and candid and speak from the heart. So I talked to them about how great a place this is and, you know, there are people telling you things in your ear about certain, certain guys. I wanted to come in, and I hope they would too, with open mind and flexible. I'm not going to, you know, we, we try to set up individual meetings. And I'm going to do the best I can, and I hope they do as well in terms of getting to know each other. And then we can kind of go from there. But I told them that's my priority. All these, you know, i got to do a bunch of things, it sounds like. But I told them, you guys are the priority. And, and that's how I'm going to proceed there. The reactions, again, I, don't, I think we try to make the best of a tough situation. Hopefully my experience in something similar has helped. But I spoke from the heart with them. Again, thank them for a, a really terrific season. And uh, kind of go from there. Coach, congrats. Uh, welcome hey, back. The, when you look at potential recruits or even talking to guys that are on the team who have a decision to make on whether they want to stick around or not, what message are you making sure that you want to relate to them as far as brown, brand of basketball and the future of this program with you leading the charge? All right. And, and again, I go back to being flexible. I mean, we have – there's a blueprint I'm fairly comfortable with that's pr been successful. Now, I've been at this program, too. So it's just like an offensive philosophy. When I talk about that, when you talk about an offensive philosophy, which we have, you wrinkle a little bit here depending on your strength. So I'm going to approach that the same way with everything. I have a, there's a blueprint. There's a different blueprint for Hawaii. So I, and I talked to them about that. They're, these guys have some great strengths, obviously. And you're going to tailor some things to that. I told them that. The big, main thing I want to tell them, and this is going back to, I know you're asking me my recruiting philosophy. I always tell people we keep it pretty simple. People, you know, we've had success at St. Mary's. And people say, well, what's the secret? I said, keep it simple. I mean, a lot of people run around the world and recruit a million different people. We're going to recruit a lot of guys. But we're going to be very calculated in certain areas because, number one, if you recruit a million guys, you're not going to know them very well. There's a transfer epidemic going on in the world because I think people rush into things or I think people sign guys. I think it's important, just like I said from the people aspect. You're going to recruit less guys, a lot of guys, not as many as not going crazy. We're not going to chase their tail so that we can get to know them well on the front end. And number two, player development is pretty important. And if you're running around all the time, who's working with your players? So I told them that. I try to keep it simple with, with our approach moving forward and uh, you know the style, all that. That's going to come into play. I get that. Right now, we just got to make sure. You know, the other thing, here's you know what we're looking for. High-quality people. Good players. People who want to be at Hawaii and understand how special it is. And it's very special. Uh, Coach, is one of your first orders of business going to be assembling your staff? And um, do, do you feel like you have some people who could come in on short notice? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's funny. It's, no, as you go through the profession, if you're doing your due diligence, you you know pretty you, you got a list of the recruits, and you don't treat it differently as a, in terms of coaches. You know the good ones out there. And there are a lot of good ones. And then you guys, you, you have to, again, the same thing with the players as with the coaches. One, I have to visit with the guys here, and I'm looking forward to doing that. And then I, I have the guys that will fit the you know, requirements we're talking about. Great people, 
great coaches, understand Hawaii or want to learn about Hawaii and want to be here. I think continuity is very important. Congratulations, Coach. Thank you. I'm just wondering if you had any intra, uh, trepidation or concerns about the, uh, the NCAA uh, investigations and controversy that's been going on with this program. Good question. I, I'm not so much at liberty to discuss any specifics. I'm, I think there's some uncertainty there. Um, the way I'm approaching it is, I, it sounds like the people in compliance, and we have a great compliance department, has done a great job tackling what they could do and making the best of a tough situation. And like I said, I'm, I'm ready for the challenge that could come. I'm not going to run from it. We're not going to run from it. We're going to tackle it head on, like I said, and approach it the right way and make sure we don't have any issues moving forward. But we're definitely not going to, unless someone tells me how the excuses help you, we're not going to go looking for excuses. We just got to be very prepared. Um, holding the fort down for five games is a lot different than what you're embarking upon now. But what did you, what were some of the things you learned from that? Because it is different. The five games is the same. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know there's a, a different level there. Um, it helped. It helped a lot. It was, a, you know, it's funny looking back. I, I think <laughs> we had lost, we actually had lost three in a row. We were 9-0 coming in here into the Diamond Head, and we had lost three straight games. And we come back to St. Mary's, and our next three games are at Pacific, who was opening up their first game of Big West playing Bob Thomas and the longtime coaches in there, and the place was rocking. And then you're at Gonzaga, so you're at Pacific, at Gonzaga, at Portland, and Coach Bennett just said, All right, Gannat, all yours, good luck. <laughs> so it helped a lot because you have to make in game decisions. Randy Bennett has, I can't talk enough about him, his influence here. He has put me in as good a position in terms of responsibilities, and I've asked for responsibilities. As many as you can have, that's all you can do. You know, at times as an assistant, you can't really get your crack until you get your crack. And so, you know, at least I had a five-game stint where I ran the program for two weeks. I couldn't speak with Coach. And uh, I had, had an opportunity to be coaching in games and making all those decisions. So... I can at least safely say that I've now had every aspect, I think, of running a program. And that's where it goes back to working your way up and starting as a volunteer. I think it's important when you manage a program to know how it works, and I know I know that. Um, but it did help in terms of, obviously, the in-game, maybe a little bit more media responsibilities, uh, running practices, meeting with your team, your staff. Uh, it was an invaluable experience for me. Coach, congratulations. Uh, this is a two-parter. One, how much have you been briefed on the NCAA allegations? And two, you're coming from a place at St. Mary's where it was currently in an NCAA investigation and had recruiting sanctions. How did you find the atmosphere change, and how do you plan to temper that here when something does have come down? Well, a couple of things on the NCAA, and I don't know how much liberty I'm allowed to tell. That I've got a lot of meetings lined up to get briefed a little bit more. So I really probably know as much as you guys. In terms of at St. Mary's, I wasn't part of what it had, a, I, when I returned, that whatever had happened was before I got back. And I take great pride in this. I was part of the rehabilitation process. They put me in charge of overseeing. So it, it kind of when I first came back, so it's been five years, five years of which we haven't had issues. And number two, we've won. So I'm very, uh, it's, it's unique. It's not something, I mean, I have some experience going through what could, could come on the horizon here without being involved in what had happened there. And I think that could serve us well.